Let's talk about a new addition to the Chiefs practice squad. Look at the threat level of having Christian McCaffrey out there on Sunday, a final injury report, then look at how the Chiefs can win this game against the 49ers and much freaking more. But first, how about those Chiefs? What's up guys, my name is Cole, AKA the Auburn Bearded Aristocat, and I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs. So make sure to sub if you're new, hit that like button, all that good stuff, and let's get into this video starting first with a quick merch plug. This shirt and many shirts that I wear are from breakingtea.com. So you can go there, check it out. I get a little bit of a kickback. Affiliate link is in the description down below. And then I also have my own merch, bearded merch, coffee tumblers, sweaters, hoodies, and all kinds of stuff like that. So you could check that out in the description if you'd like to. And if not, it's okay. I will not hate you. All right. If you live under a rock like Patrick from SpongeBob, you may not have known that yesterday the 49ers made a huge blockbuster type of trade for former Panthers running back Christian McCaffrey. That's right. They traded McCaffrey in exchange for a second, third, and fourth round pick in 2023 and a fifth round pick in 2024. Four picks for a running back that's missed more games than he's played since 2019. No thank you, but hey, good for them, I guess. Anyway, I bring this up because it was reported from Cam Inman that Christian McCaffrey says it will be a coaching decision if he plays on Sunday, but quote, you can process a lot in two days and we'll be able to learn as much as humanly possible to get ready to play. Inman also said that running back Christian McCaffrey didn't practice today, but came out to watch, stay late, and to learn from coaches, his status is to be determined. So my thoughts are, I think he will play Sunday, though I'm sure it will be in a pretty limited capacity, maybe third and shorts in the red zone, goal line situation, stuff like that. And also maybe just used out there as a distraction at times, like he's in the huddle and they say, hey, you have no idea what play this is, but just line up over there and run that way. We ain't throwing it to you. But either way, the Chiefs will at least have to be aware of him and keep their little pupils on him because he is a dangerous weapon. There's no doubt about it. And let's look at this crazy stat. With the addition of Christian McCaffrey, three of the four players with the most yards after contact per game the last five seasons now play for the 49ers. That is freaking wild. Look at it. George Kittle has an average of 41.4 yards after contact per game. Then Debo Samuel at 43.1. Chargers running back Austin Eckler is in second at 45. And then the newly signed 49er Christian McCaffrey is all the way up at the top at 52.7. So these are three definite weapons on this team that the Chiefs cannot take lightly on Sunday, but something that can be taken lightly, more than likely, at least, is this wide receiver signing the Chiefs just made to their practice squad. Yes, you heard me right, another receiver. The Chiefs have signed former Bears and Vikings wide receiver Emir smith Marset to their practice squad, and he was on the field for practice today, Friday, actually. smith Marset was a fifth round pick by the Vikings in 2021, catching five passes for 115 yards and two TDs in eight games, but then was released and claimed later by the Bears. Well, after a rough week five performance, to say the least, that involved two penalties and a fumble, that sealed the game, I believe. He gone from Chicago, but the Chiefs were like, okay, cool, we got a spot to fill on the practice squad, so come on over. And I don't think they value him currently as a receiving threat to throw out in a game, but maybe, just maybe, for special teams, returning punts in particular. Listen to this snippet from Chiefs Wire. The 6'1", 185-pound wideout returned 53 kicks in college for 1,500 yards and two TDs. In two NFL seasons across two teams, smith Marset has returned just five kicks for 100 yards, so nothing crazy there. He also brings the KC practice squad back up to 16. So he joins Chris Conley, Cornell Powell, Marcus Kemp, and Doris Fountain as the fifth receiver on the practice squad. So there you have it. Not sure how much of a future he holds here in KC, but five receivers on the practice squad. Holy smokes. Let's move on to an injury report update. The Chiefs have three players listed on there. Rashad Fenton is out, but that is no real surprise. He didn't participate all week in practice with a hamstring injury he sustained in the Monday night football game against the Raiders and won't suit up on Sunday. Hopefully between missing this game and then the bye week next week, Fenton should be good to go upon his return. And then defensive end Mike Dana, calf and left guard Joe Tooney ankle are questionable. I don't like that about Tooney, but if Tooney doesn't play, I'd imagine Nick Allegretti steps up and fills in his spot but he was listed as a full participant on Friday, so I'd imagine Tooney plays. Mike Dana, if he doesn't play, it'll be Frank Clark, Carlos Dunlap, young George Karloftis, and Malik Herring up next 
more than likely. Other than that, Coach Reed said in his presser today that there's a pretty good chance that linebacker Willie Gay plays on Sunday. And as far as cornerback Trent McDuffie is concerned, we won't know until 3 p.m. or so Saturday. But Coach Reed said, we'll see. I'm about to meet and see about those guys here in a minute. Well, my question is, Andy Reed, why the heck don't you see about the status on these players before you talk with the media? I don't know. Is that a crazy thought? Because it's pretty pointless to hear, I don't know. I'm about to meet with them right after you ask me these questions about them. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's funny, but less than ideal for content creators like me. Anyway, moving on. The 49ers injuries are as follows. Defensive end Nick Bosa, left tackle Trent Williams, and safety Jimmy Ward, who were all on the injury report all week. They're off of it now, and they'll play on Sunday. So, great. Safety, Talanahu Hafunga, that I can never say his name, he's listed as questionable, as well as former Chiefs cornerback Charvarius Ward. He was limited in practice today with a groin spasm, groin injury, after not participating all week. So it's certainly a sign that he's trending upwards and may play Sunday. We'll have to see. I'm sure he wants to play against his former team, but time will tell on how his groin is doing. And then defensive tackle Eric Armstead has been ruled out. Out. So the 49ers get back some of their best, which always seems to happen against the Chiefs, but I wouldn't have it any other way. No excuses. Best against the best. Let's freaking go. Seriously, though, Trent Williams is probably the best left tackle in the league, or close to it at least, than Nick Bosa as well. Nick Bosa and Jimmy Ward will play, but remember, he will be out there with a chicken leg for a hand. Now, Here's some game thoughts, and then I'll get into prediction and keys to victory. This is a Super Bowl rematch of sorts. Okay, sort of, kind of, not really. I mean, yes, the 49ers want to enact a little revenge and get a win from a team they lost to in the Super Bowl that they were beating by 10 points with like seven minutes left in the fourth quarter, I might add. And this is the first time these two teams have played since they played each other in the Super Bowl. But no matter what the 49ers do, they ain't getting a ring for this game on Sunday. It would still feel good for them to win. So I know they're going to come in hungry for a dub, especially after coming off of a loss to the Falcons last week and want to get above the 500 mark. They're three and three. And with the trade for Christian McCaffrey, they are showing that they really want to go all in this season, not later. Now, they also have some key starters back, which is good for them. Now, the Chiefs are coming off of a tough loss to arguably the best team in football, the Buffalo Bills. And to some analysts, the best football team in the history of the entire NFL. Nobody's ever seen anybody like them. Anyway, they do not want to lose another game prior to their bye week. It is also worth noting that the Chargers are also 4-2, and two, so you really want to win because you don't want to be behind in your own division against the Chargers especially. Jimmy Garoppolo and Kyle Shanahan are 11-3 and three following a loss in their tenure together, and ironically, Mahomes and Andy Reid are also 11-3 and three after a loss. So I can 100% say without a shadow of a doubt that one of them will be 11-4. After a loss on Sunday, just is what it is, the Chiefs offense has the best scoring offense in the league and are sixth best in total yards. The defense, on the other hand, 24th overall in points allowed and 19 in yards allowed. Meanwhile, the 49ers offense is ranked 20th overall in points scored, 18th overall in total yards, so their offense is sort of just meh, but they've also had a change of QB since Trey Lance got injured. Now, while they did say their offense is eh, at times, they still have weapons. George Kittle, Debo Samuel. Who am I kidding? Those guys are great. And now Christian McCaffrey, as I stated above. So they have the potential to get things done. Now on the other side of the coin, the 49ers defense is very good. They are ranked second overall in points allowed and first overall in yards allowed. Never mind the fact they've played against the Bears, Seahawks, who are decent, Broncos, Rams, Eh, Panthers and Falcons. I mean, the Seahawks are clicking. The Rams are, what, okay this year, but the rest, yikes. So I don't know what all that says about their defense when they are playing against Justin Fields. Geno Smith, who's actually playing well, to give him credit there, Russell Wilson, and Baker Mayfield. Either way, the Chiefs have to respect their defense, certainly, as they have some definite ballers over there. But they've also played some suspect teams so far as well. We will get into those players here in the keys to victory. So let's start out with the first key. I'm going to go offense than defense here. Patrick Mahomes needs to be protected. Okay? Easier said than done, though. He was pressured, hit, 
or sacked on 21 plays last week before the play itself could actually fully develop. So he needs a clean pocket here, which is a bit of a tall order, I know. But hey, one can dream. If not, Mahomes needs to get the ball out quick and pretty much be on high alert on every play for two players. Linebacker Fred Warner, who's a top 10 Top five, depending on who you ask, linebacker in the league. And also for defensive end, Nick Bosa. If Bosa lines up against Andrew Wiley, get him chip help, please, and tell Wiley that he has chip help on the outside. So like Von Miller spinning and sacking Mahomes, it doesn't happen because Wiley knows he has help. I don't know what was going on on that play, but I digress. Here's the next key. Let Isaiah Pacheco have the ball and run. If not him, though I'd like it to be him, Give it to somebody and run the freaking ball, please. It's a must. Last week against the Bills, they had 68 total rushing yards with their lead rusher being CH, who had nine carries for 33 whole yards. Gag. And then the week prior, they did manage 103 yards on the ground with Mahomes getting 28 of them. I mean, I get it. The Chiefs aren't a run first team, but it would be a little ideal to get defenses to believe in some sort of a run threat. Or not, I don't know. The next key, get Kelsey and Juju involved again. Juju went off last week and may be the Chiefs' best wide receiver by far on this team. Look to him, feed him, and let's freaking go. And last thing I'll say actually about the offense, I would not complain at all. Not one bit if they decided to work Sky Moore in more. Work M-O-O-R-E-N-M-O-R-E, -E -E, please. His average separation per route run is somewhere around the number of 5.11 yards per next-gen stats, which means he's getting open. So throw him the ball unless it's a throw that ends the game and in an interception against the Buffalo Bills. In that case, do not do that. For the offensive side of the ball, though, some of this is going to depend on the status of cornerback Trent McDuffie. We won't find out until after I release this video, uh, and I'm taking Saturday off to be with my family. I've been working a lot of hours. So I'll talk about both scenarios here. One key for the defense is the D-line needs to try to find a way to get pressure on good old Jimmy G. This man is no escape artist like Josh Allen. He's sackable. That's an odd term, yes, but he's sackable. Get pressure with the front four or maybe just by blitzing one or two so you don't have to send the house. And the secondary can hold it down. Obviously, I like the blitzing. So Spags is going to do what he does. He's going to mix it in. He's going to try to confuse him. But I would love to see the front four get some pressure on Jimmy. Jimmy G, if McDuffie is back, I love the idea of blitzing Sneed even more. But I hate it at the same time because uh, McDuffie will also be a bit rusty. So I don't know what the heck I'm trying to say here other than get pressure on Jimmy G. Blitz, yes, but please don't leave Joshua Williams repeatedly on an island and give him some over-the-top help. Now, thankfully, the 49ers are a more run-heavy team at times, and Willie Gay Jr. is back. So another key is to let Bolton run his butt downhill and make these game-changing tackles for loss. Now that you have Willie Gay who is an athletic specimen back there in pass coverage doing his thing, I feel like Nick Bolton is going to unlock himself and really look even better. He's been trying to hold a lot down with Willie Gay absent. Shout out to Darius Harris for holding it down, but Willie Gay is that guy, and it's time. The last key I'll talk about before giving my prediction is win the turnover battle on defense, please. I know that's a duh, Cole, but listen to this. The Chiefs defense has allowed 15 TDs to one interception this season. They've also allowed 20 plus points in 11 straight games. The franchise record is 12 and they have one game with multiple takeaways in the last 11 games. So this really needs to change and I pray that it does starting Sunday and then it would also be helpful if Mahomes doesn't throw two picks like he did last week. I realize the MVS pick he was trying to give MVS a shot at a what he thought was going to be a 50-50 ball. Kyer Elam made a good play on it. And then the game ending INT to Sky Moore. The defense fooled him, was playing man coverage on one side, zone on the other, but still two picks. I mean, we got to win the turnover battle. We got to make field goals. We've missed a field goal in like three or four games this season. Anyway, enough of me rambling on. Here's my score prediction. I'm going to go with the Chiefs 30 49ers 23. I think the Chiefs have the will, the desire, the way, the ability, etc., to get the job done. Jimmy G versus Patrick Mahomes in that scenario. I'm taking Mahomes winning the majority of those outings all freaking day. I know the 49ers have a great defense, but again, I think those stats are slightly padded by playing against some sort of not good teams, and the Chiefs will rise to the occasion and get the job done. In Veach, we trust, yes. 
to help with the roster, but in Mahomes, we trust on game day. And the only reason I'm going to say it's a seven point game is because if the Chiefs O-line doesn't hold, it's going to be a tough night. And the defense again has given up an average of 20 points at least in 11 straight games. And for some reason, I don't see that changing here. But let me know your thoughts on this. What are your keys to victory and overall score prediction? Where do you agree with me and disagree? Make sure to let me know down in the comments and let's fight about it down there per usual. Trust me, I'm here for all the freaking smoke. So let's get it. Make sure to leave a bearded comment or super thanks to potentially be featured in an upcoming vid sub like, you know the freaking deal. Then check out this video here, pew pew, which is the first video I ever made on this channel. And wow. A lot has changed. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.